I have a very interesting and difficult subject this morning, Paramhansa Yogananda, Incarnation of Divine Love. It's difficult because a master doesn't see himself the way we see him. We see him as a person who did certain things, who uh, seemed to respond in certain ways and therefore had a personality. Um, we see him <clears throat> limited in time and space. And a master doesn't see himself that way at all. I think probably in one way the most noteworthy feature of master's life was his constant refusal to accept our constant thought of him as a person, as an individual. He would always hold up before us the ideal that it was God who was expressing through him, that it was God whom we loved if we found anything worthwhile in him, that all of it, <clears throat> all of it, uh, we, we talk of love and we think of his great love for people, and indeed he had great love, and in a sense he had great love for people, but not in the sense that we tend to think, because it wasn't human love in the normal way. It was that he loved God totally, as he described the uh, love of God's uh, love solitary because omnipresent. And he would see that love reflected, his divine mother reflected in people. He would respond most to those qualities that would help us to grow in divine love or that reflected more of uh, divine qualities. It was always on another level than uh, the way most people would think. There was an interesting passage which I mentioned in, autobiog uh, in my autobiography in the, in the path of a thing that he wrote in the interpretations of the Bhagavad Gita where he said that uh, when, well, he described God as being the only reality. God has manifested himself as all these souls. And let's say that God in the form of... Uh, uh, John Smith finally realizes God. Then he realizes that it was God who became John Smith and finally became God again. That, that the appearance of separateness that all of us have is only that, an appearance. We're not really separate from the Infinite One. The only thing that we maintain, because nothing's ever lost, we, we maintain individuality as a memory. We remember that John became John, that God became John Smith, and finally merged back into him. But when we have merged into him, in our own awareness, there isn't any separateness between us and him. And Debbie Mukherjee then tried to pin Master down and say, he said, "Well, that means, sir, that you're God." Well, Master didn't mean that in the sense that he didn't. He, he, he said the ocean cannot, the wave cannot say that it's the ocean. We can say when we become one with the ocean that we have become the wave, but we cannot say that the wave is the ocean. In other words, you can't limit, uh, you can't define the ocean in terms of a wave. The wave may see itself as the ocean, but then it doesn't see itself as the wave anymore. And so for Debbie to say, then that means you are God, means, oh, you, this form, this consciousness, this person, is God. And that was exactly the opposite of what Yogananda was trying to say. He was trying to get away from that thought that uh, the individual manifestation is uh, separate from the infinite, that it's only an expression of the infinite. And so, so you said, why do you say you? Say he if you must. Or, um, and uh, Debbie said, well, but you said that you're one with, uh, that, you, that you've realized God. And Master said, well, the scriptures say, that he who is one with God is God. And Debbie triumphantly said, Aha, you said it. <laughs> but uh, always Master was trying to convey this very subtle point that it isn't in the individual manifestation that he is God. It's that he realizes that, he, that that individual manifestation is only a tiny part of his infinite reality. And so Debbie said, Well, then it's your humility, sir, that causes you to speak this way. And Master answered perfectly fittingly in that context too, how can there be humility when there is no consciousness of self? A very good answer, because 
that's what he was really saying, is that you lose the consciousness of being an individual and realize that you are the infinite. Now, when we talk of Paramahansa Yogananda, incarnation of love, inevitably we're talking about a particular manifestation of something that's infinite. Inevitably, we're talking about a person 